Well, there you go. Frognarks. I never thought we'd say that word ever on this channel. Ever. Hey everybody, what's up? Circus here, coming at you with this week's Rogue Deck discussion. Again, we're not going to be doing a full rankings just because uh, most of these guys just scored one top eight, maybe a top four. Not really worth going into uh, a full production on my end, I don't feel. So I thought Kamel could come in here and we'll just talk about these decks a little bit. They're they're different this week, though. They're, they are different. Yeah, they got swamped around a little bit. You yeah, know. So that's good to see. So if you guys don't know what we do... Uh, in the power rankings, we track decks as they're played throughout the week, and then uh, in tournaments, then we see how they finish. We give them points based on how they finish, and then we rank them. Uh, but lately, uh, Noble Knights, Desperado, Blue Eyes, they're soaking up all the points. The Rogue decks are getting pushed out of the meta right now, which is typically mm -hmm. what we see once a meta starts to settle. Uh, there's just not a lot of room for the Rogue decks to get in. Like, when a, when a meta's new, oh... The, the rogue decks are like rats, man. They just come pouring in. They're just like, oh, we're in, we're in. And then once the, the meta decks start getting more solidified into their builds, they start pushing them back out. You know, they push them back out into the streets. And... Yeah, a lot of these were, that we're going to see, they were doing pretty well in the recent weeks, not too long ago, like just a little bit over a month ago. But uh, the new support from the new decks have really, like they've really oppressed the, the lesser decks, right. so to speak. All right, well, we'll start with one that's kind of a fan favorite. It's definitely an anime favorite, right? I think, mm -hmm. uh, and that's Magnets. People are always asking us, should magnets. I get Magnets? They're easy to build. Uh, they're new player friendly, right? Or that's what we always hear, free to play friendly, especially with that Book of Moon uh, in the main <laughs> deck there. He'll probably tell you that he got it with 200 gems. Uh, definitely. But yeah, Magnets are still here you know i did say that they would be on the road deck roundup and here they are on the road deck roundup and no if you had the question you should not go build magnets because it does require three resets of two mini boxes and that is going to set you back quite a bit and i do believe this is from battle phase rising sun the top eight list i think but uh, yeah, Magnus, not too much has changed. Their extra deck is kind of just an afterthought. It does not help them all too much. Um, I do think that the most useful card of the extra deck for the Magnet Core strategy is the Levier Sea Dragon. It lets you return a banished monster um, to the field, and then you can return the Beta Electromagnetic Warrior to the field to get its effect again. But uh, other than, yeah. I was going to say what I love is they're like, oh, it's free to play. Free to play friendly. You got Book of Moon, Cosmic Cyclone, Venus Chain. <laughs> yeah, even yeah. Love Air, which is the best Xyz monster <laughs> for magnets, is a Xyz monster in a box that the mini box. That that's the only well, the card. Utopia's in there too. I know uh, yeah. that that that's a main box. You are <laughs> exactly that as well. So yeah, I mean, pretty pretty. Getting, I guess getting the core might be easy, but you know, making it tournament worthy is a different different story and a lot of people be like i never play tournaments only play the ladder okay that's fine i still wouldn't yeah. recommend getting the deck it's not a bad deck it's just it's gonna get power crept over the next month very easily for sure and it, it is one of the decks that has already been uh hit quite hard by power creeping i talked about um a lot of these decks that don't really have more modern strategies that they kind of just like shuffle around monsters to get out one monster from their main deck that they can search, a lot of those strategies are kind of going to start to be thrown by the wayside and not be as powerful. We're starting to see that with how powerful Blue Eyes and Noble Knights are becoming, how easily they can bring out boss monsters from the extra deck. So, yeah. Yeah, and there's Decks nothing like wrong with it. I know a lot of people, their win con is Karma Cut, and I get that. That's how the game works. But, um, yeah, your monsters have to do more than just to shuffle stuff around right yeah for sure especially when um the state of your berserkion can be manipulated so easily this deck is very susceptible to uh being fiendish chained being karma cutted and not being able to get your resources back that is absolutely huge yeah and part of the reason why this deck's falling off so much all right so the next deck is probably another one people are like should i get it it's easy to get Oh, well, I mean, it's in a, a structure deck and then into what a mini box, I believe. 
and that's Fire Kings. I think it's a mini box, right? The Arvada. Yes, it so, is a mini box. This is a and, fun deck. I, I gotta admit, I had a lot of fun with this. Herf and I had a lot of fun with it. Is it a great deck? Mm, I don't know. It's it's pretty fun. I do like the idea behind it, but the deck does revolve around the Fire King Arvada. This is another mm -hmm. deck where you cannot afford to cut corners. Uh, you do need three Fire King Arvada, and you know this guy's playing two of the Grunix. You can do that, sure. But uh, this is another deck where you cannot afford to experiment much with, and it's a very do-or-die deck. If you do not open Arvada, you will struggle against most, if not most, if not all matchups that have competent turn one or turn two boards. Uh, you'll struggle to even stack up to them in any way, shape, or form unless you have a monster and a protection uh, back row, a defensive back row to stop their strategy because besides that you literally have no defense at all well you got to get and into your loop as quick as possible and if you do that you're fine but if you don't get right. into that loop you're in trouble yeah and you need arvada to do that like pretty like the most efficiently yeah so if you don't if you don't have that you will be in trouble fire kings is a little fun deck and, i mean you know second yeah, place but... in the meta weekly is not bad and second place in the camelos cup or Camelo's Cup. That's not bad. Two two second place finishes, but just not enough to to bring it home. Had this been two first place finishes, we'd be talking about this on power rankings. That's true. The deck is competent, don't get me wrong. It's just that, you know, as far as consistency goes, that's why it's in the rogue deck discussion. Yeah. All right, let's get this garbage out of here and talk about the next pile of garbage. And that's my Oh my gosh, I actually know absolutely nothing about Mayakashi. <laughs> I say that every time, but um, it's basically they climb the ladder and they climb a ladder to nowhere. That's that's the biggest complaint is their final form isn't that great. It looks like this guy's going into Star Eater, which isn't a bad card, don't get me wrong, but you would like something in the Mayakashi engine that does something stellar, right? Yeah, I feel like uh, when this deck does top tournaments, it's never uh, the same version. It's usually a switch between this one and the the other version that tries to splice in uh, sure, more really, Shiryui cards. Yeah. You know, they they summon the Sun Saga, the Shogun Saga. Um, you know, as well, they probably play you know Solitaire and you know something else to special summon zombie monsters from the deck. However, this one seems to be strictly Mayakashi monsters. Well, if you playing. look at this one's playing balance, which is mm -hmm. a very popular skill right now, which we typically haven't seen in the past, uh, balance builds, and it's got a lot of back row, which we didn't, yeah, okay, you know, yeah, that more is back row than we saw before, yeah. Mayakashi, um, unlike Shirnui, usually does not run a lot of back, um, traps in general, so using balance, this is generally different, so it probably gives it a lot more survivability. Utilizing Super Team Buddy Force Knight as well. Great card. And hey, true nade. That's kind of new too. Yeah, hey, true nade. That's one way to get around back row. We don't want to have to worry about um, getting rid of it with your removal options. You can just focus on getting rid of monsters. Yeah, so Mayakashi, they're that deck that just comes back every once in a while. They're like, look at us. We got a top eight. And what they get? They got a top four in Battle Phase Sunday. So there you go. Okay. Congratulations right. to you. All right. Next one. I do not vouch for the quality of the screenshot. I'm guessing the guy took a picture of his computer. Yeah. And sent it, in. it It Look at this. It's oh, like, man. Yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> but so it was the highest playing. scoring deck. Uh, uh, or <laughs> this deck got, yeah. Oh, it was. Top eight battle phase EU and battle phase Friday. So there you go. All right. Uh, so I guess it's playing Weather Painters. And uh, oh, I picked this one because it had the boxer in it. That's why. Oh, That's the Battle of Boxer Veil. Yeah. That but, is that is a very unique tech choice for Weather Painters. Of course, uh, you know, Weather Painters, they are, um, they are one of the only decks in the game where it actually matters where your monsters go. And Balan Buxer and Veil actually special summons, and it can alter where your monsters are placed on your turn. So that is something that you have to be careful of. But playing them in the main deck, I guess, that you're able to play around them. And something else that I noticed, playing only two traps 
probably because they uh, probably want to search the trap from the deck and place it directly onto the field with the effect of the monster. Probably not going to want to draw into it. Uh, probably going to want to draw into something like Valhalla or the Balan Boxer Veil or a Kiteroid in order to make sure they can set start setting up walls of monsters and... Um, yeah, this is not a balance build. Usually that's what we see with Weather Painters. This one's yeah. Destiny Draw. And look at all that protection. Sphere Karibo, Kite Roid, Battle and Boxer. I mean, if you're playing against this, I mean, you're just ready to throw your phone at the wall, right? Every time you attack in, you get that. So we've usually seen from what Weather Painters in terms of defense is the Rainbow Life, Hollow Life Barrier, all that stuff. But this time, Battle and Boxer Veil and Kite Roid as right. the defense. Oh. They probably got tired of their stuff being sniped in the back row, so now they're like, oh, it's in my hand. Now what are you going to do? There's no way you're getting that. Yeah. Can't Cosmic Cycle in my hand. Ouroboros says hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there you go. A little bit different, uh, spicier, or just a little bit different build than we're used to see, and I think that's why I wanted to look at this one. But there you go. Weather Painters just never going away. They're always right here in the Rogue Deck Roundup. Mm. And then the final deck of the night, we had to do a little research on this one to make sure what we knew what we were talking about because what the hell is Frognarks? Frognarks. Frognarks. So, a lot of TCG players like Monarchs, and they know that Monarchs are typically played with Frogs. And basically, Frogs are able to special summon themselves, so you get like a free monster in the field for a tribute summon of a Monarch. And then the monarch is Caius, the dark monarch. And basically, he banishes a monster on the field when he's tribute summoned. And if it is a dark monster, you deal 1,000 damage to your opponent. Okay, and then what happens? And then that's it. They are banished. You banish that target, and you, then they take 1,000. That is it. So what, we're trying to hit, like, uh, Madrat here? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, okay. Noble Knight. The, the, the dark Madrod, I guess the Xyz monster, they become dark, right? Boars, I think. Boars becomes dark, too. No, they it? don't become dark. Okay. Xyz monsters don't become dark, but Boars does. You're boars, right. yeah, Boars. I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, Monarchs, this this got a top four in Battle Phase <laughs> EU, so there you go. And then Book of Moon, so he does that. Double Book of Moon. How much did this deck cost? <laughs> this deck is extremely expensive. Uh, the frog. The swap frog card. at the top. That's a UR, man, in a main box. Yeah, the frog cards are very spread out, and they're all URs. The side deck is all URs, playing two-spirit Karibo as well. Spores are a previous selection box card. So this deck is very expensive, and Caius is very... Uh, very one-dimensional removal that it can only happen once per turn. So uh, I'm guessing this guy did so well because no one was expecting it. He probably came from a TCG. He was like, fastest way to play Monarchs in Duel Links. <laughs> probably watched the Reddit thread or saw a deck on Reddit. It was like, I'll play this. Book of Moon? Nice. Yeah. Let's get in there. Well, there you go. Frognarks. I never thought we'd Frog. say that word ever <laughs> on this Arks. channel. Ever. All right, I think that pretty much does it this week for the Rogue Deck discussion. Maybe one day in a few months, maybe six months from now, we'll see a ro an actual Rogue Deck roundup with slides and scores and everything. But I think it's going to be a while Hopefully before soon, we see that. But gee, so, gosh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's going to be a while, I have a feeling. We'll see. Uh, we, are, we should expect a ban list after the KC Cup that's coming up here. So it's probably a month away, though. Yeah, KC Cup is coming up in a month and then the ban list gonna come a month after that hopefully uh usually up to, it's are, usually like a hoping, week or two so i don't know if we're even gonna get one for this casey cup i think they may wait till make us wait till april they've done it before they have oh, done it could before. you imagine well yeah is there anything that really needs to go but Open that would actually saying, that would actually be a, another video right there yeah that's another video we're gonna save that for another video yep yep let us know what you think in the comments. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, though, get, check out the discords if you want to get in all, any of the tournaments, battle phase events, always posted in the discord. Um, I believe they're posted the day before the event, but I believe all of the links are already made, so they'll always be up pretty quickly now. So. And they're always free, despite what some people think in our comments. 
Yes, all of the tournaments are always free. Except damage step. All right. battle phase events are free. That's right. So and the Discord's free. So you can get in yeah. the Discord for free. You can get in. Uh we do like 30 tournaments a month. You can get into 29 of them for free. That's and right. And then um have fun there. You can get new player help. You can check Kamel out on Thursday mornings at the battle phase of the rising sun. You can check me out on Twitch on Saturday nice doing the new player stream. It's a good time. So we're going to get out of here. You should get in the discord. I'm circus. That's Kamel. Peace out. We'll see you next time.